a lot of diaspora communities. They come over, they come over from Italy, they come over from Ireland uh, to the New World, and they're able to go back and to continue to have relations with people there. Whereas for the Jews who came over from Eastern Europe, and particularly from the small towns of Eastern Europe, the shtetls of Eastern Europe, communism came and uh, the border was closed and it became impossible or very difficult to go back. So they idealized it. started with the linguistic project. We were there to look at Yiddish speakers and to see how the Yiddish language changes from place to place. And so in order to do that, you want to find people who are still living in the same towns in which they were born. We were looking at Jews who lived in small towns throughout Ukraine, um, but also in other areas in Slovakia, a little bit in Romania and Moldova. Uh, so it's a big area and has a big diverse history. The oldest people we interviewed were born in the 1910s. And so as very young children, they lived through the pogroms and the civil war and the revolution of that period. And, you know, we interviewed one person in particular who showed us a scar across his arm where a bullet had hit him that ricocheted off his mother when his mother was killed. He was left in a mass grave. Uh, and a priest found him, saw that there was still a baby alive in the grave, and the priest took him and uh, you know, nursed him back to health and then returned him to the community. So these are people whose earliest memories are in this episode of unbearable violence. You know, I learned a lot from these people, and to hear firsthand how people experienced their lives and how they reflect on their lives has enormous importance. About 100,000 Jews were killed in ethnic violence during the uh, Russian Civil War. And so that should be a part of how we understand the history of that region. But it really hasn't been. And it's by speaking to people and hearing them talk about their, everybody has a story about how their father or grandfather or they themselves uh, suffered during the pogroms. When you realize how pervasive it is and how little we talk about that, kind of gives you the impetus to go back and to look at the pogroms and to see what's, what motivated that type of violence and what the impact it may have had was. The way Jews think of themselves today, I think, and the way scholarship thinks of Jews, is having left the shtetl. The shtetl is sort of the place from which everything originates. It's this, you know, uh, lost homeland sort of thing. This kind of work shows that there's people who remain there, that we're looking at the cancer history, which is the history of those who stayed. It's made us you know, widen uh, who we think of as the Jewish community.